Good afternoon, James Preston with you on Cowkine TV, live from our studios in Sydney, and you're watching The Early Trades. Well, we've been witnessing inflation expectations in the market psychology, carving out a different scenario altogether. Markets remain jittery amid a dwindling risk appetite among investors and volatile cryptocurrencies. Along with the latest trending market updates, I'll also be taking a closer look at why New Zealand has suspended its travel bubble with Victoria. That's later, so stick with us, but let's start by casting an eye over how the market charter is panning out today. We start with our piece of history in the Australian banking space as the Commonwealth Bank shares have reached $100 a share for the first time in its 109-year history. Economic recovery prospects and the booming housing space has been supporting the share price rally this year. Notably, the Commonwealth Bank Chief Executive Matt Kyman will be addressing the stakeholders at the Bank's Investor Day on Thursday morning. Moving on, and the ASX 200 opened lower amid a weak closing of the US markets overnight. Iron ore miners and the energy sector are the biggest drag amid dips in metal and oil prices. Whereas the IT sector seems to be pulling up the ASX courts. Market participants weighed the central bank's soothing words that put to rest tapering worries for the time being and helped the dollar dive to four and a half month lows. However, home prices continued to rise year on year in March. According to the S&P CoreLogic Case Shiller National Home Price Index, which monitors home rates in the municipalities. The US home prices jumped 13% in the 12 month period up until March 2021, from 12% in the corresponding 12 month period. It was the highest jump in US home prices in almost 15 years. More broadly though, the confidence of Americans in the United States economy slipped in May for the first time in six months as they grew more worried about a rising cost of living and future job prospects. The US Conference Board said that its Consumer Confidence Index fell to a reading of 117.2, down from April's revised reading of 117.5. The data missed expectations as economists were expecting a reading of around 119. The yield curve flattened further for a fourth consecutive session as investors bought the long end of the curve on the view that price pressure would be stable for the rest of the year. Let's turn our attention back to the ASX and the bottom performing stocks in this index are Kogan.com surprisingly and Redbubble. While testing services provider ALS is edging up after reporting a 35% increase in profit. The company stated that financial year net attributable profit surged as losses from impairment were offset by proceeds from China's asset sales. Notably, the company has declared a final dividend of 14.6 cents per share, more than double from a year earlier. ALS also reported a 35% rise in its full-year net attributable profit to $173 million. The revenue rose 5.2% to $1.76 billion, and ALS is engaged in the provision of professional technical services, primarily in the areas of testing, measurement and inspection supporting environmental monitoring, food and pharmaceutical quality assurance, mining and mineral exploration, commodity certification, equipment maintenance and asset care operations. Fletcher Building is also soaring high on the ASX 200 following a guidance upgrade. Fletcher Building said that it has upgraded its guidance and will undertake a capital return to shareholders of up to New Zealand $300 million. Fletcher Building is one of the largest listed companies in New Zealand. and The company is involved in the manufacturing and distribution of building materials and residential and commercial construction. On that note, it's time to do a bit of reconstruction ourselves and take a small break. But don't go too far because we'll be taking a look at the share sectoral performance on the ASX in just a moment here on Cowkine TV. At Cowkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. 
whether space travel will gain momentum while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts. Our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Calkine TV. Welcome back, James Preston with you on Calkine TV and you're watching the early trades. Let's jump straight into the sectoral performance of today's trading session. Iron ore miners are the biggest drag amid a dip in metal prices. The heavyweight Australian miners, Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals Group and BHB Group are trending lower today. On Tuesday, the benchmark Dalian Iron Ore and Shanghai Steel Futures traded with some selling pressure in a very volatile session. The volatility with net selling took place as China's warning against hoarding and speculation of commodities kept commodity traders on the edge. Also, copper prices fell in the last trading session as the markets fretted over China's crackdown on prices of industrial materials. However, a weakness in the US dollar and expectations of strong demand coupled with tight supplies capped the downside. Moving on, and gold stocks such as West Gold Resources and Silver Lake are the ASX 200's leading percentage gainers, soaring high amid gold price intake on the back of a dip in US consumer confidence. Now recharging with the energy sector and Australian energy companies such as Oil Search, Beach Energy and Santos are unfortunately all trading in the red territory. On Tuesday, crude oil prices were mildly up as demand increased with the Northern Hemisphere's summer driving season approaching, which in turn offset worries of excessive supply if Iran possibly returns to the market. Moreover, the IT sector is capping the ASX 200 fall as the leading sector today. Australian shares such as WizTech Global are riding high amid a dip in yields. Moving on, let us now look at the major newsmakers in the Australian share market today. And there is some rather major news to begin with. The ASX Deputy Chief Executive Peter Hyam has resigned from his position after 23 years with the company. Mr Hyam will join Motive Partners, a global investment firm focusing on financial services technology companies as an industry partner. It's also been a big day for Westpac. The bank has raised $2.75 billion of unsecured debt in the US bond market overnight, marking the first time an Australian bank tapped the debt markets in this format since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The next update is from Fonterra Shareholders Fund, who has issued a warning to its investors saying that the company's earnings could be under significant pressure in the last quarter of the year due to the seasonal profile of the business and also with tightening margins. Another Aussie company with news today is the holistic marketing company, Ive Group, who are expecting underlying EBITDA from continuing operations for the full year to June 30 to be in the range of 98 million to 100 million Australian dollars. Wealth Management Australian Ethical Investment said that it expected underlying profit after tax before fees of 8.8 .8 million and 9.3 million as against 7 million dollars in the previous year. Australian Ethical is a leader in ethical managed funds and superannuation, helping you to seek positive investments that support the planet, people and of course the environment. To a bit of news about our favourite nugget, yellow metal of course, Western Australian based gold development and exploration company Dacey and Gold has launched a full underwritten two tranche institutional placement to raise $40 million at 28 cents a share. According to the company, the proceeds of the placement will be used to accelerate a significant 300,000 square metre drill program across Mount Morgans and Redcliffe, advance the high grade Redcliffe deposits into production, restarting underground production from the Greater Westralia mining area and of course also funding general working capital. Very much the potential for exponential growth with the Dacing Gold 
but we'll be hoping for no further growth in the COVID pandemic, which is currently afflicting Victoria. And it is having some rather serious ramifications. All the details in just a moment on Kalkine TV, so please stay with us. At Kalkine TV, we'll take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility, as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum, while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Kalkine TV. Welcome back, James Preston with you on Kalkine TV. You're watching the early trades and it's time to delve into our major news story of the day. New Zealand's decision to suspend the travel bubble with Victoria. COVID-19 continues to cause havoc across the globe and Victoria is the latest region of concern. The emergence of five new cases in Melbourne in the last two days has prompted the New Zealand government to temporarily suspend the quarantine-free travel agreement between New Zealand and Victoria. The five coronavirus cases were linked to a past one in Wallet, which was initially recorded on the 11th of May. Concerningly, all of the active cases have been identified with the Indian variant of COVID-19. The travel suspension came into effect last night at 6pm Australian Eastern Standard Time or 8pm New Zealand Time, and the suspension will be for an initial 72-hour period. With the detection of new COVID-19 cases, the Victorian state government has issued a new set of protocols. It also imposes a cap of 30 people at a public gathering and a limitation of five people at private gatherings. Also, the wearing of face masks has been made compulsory even indoors. However, schools and workplaces will remain open for now. At present, Victoria has 13 cases of coronavirus Further, Australia has imposed a two-week travel restriction for flying to New Zealand for those who have been to the regions of interest. New Zealand's Ministry of Health has advised the Kiwis who had travelled to Melbourne on or after the 11th of May. and These individuals must now monitor their symptoms and, if need be, self-isolate themselves and go for testing. The New Zealand government has stated that it was closely working with its Australian counterpart and was actively supervising the situation. When the trans-Tasman bubble between the two neighbours commenced on the 19th of April 2021, the government had chalked out a contingency plan to deal with such an outbreak, and we'll now get to see it in action and hopefully see just how effective it is. Well, potentially we are looking at improved situations soon, but until next time, stay safe, stay vigilant, and stay tuned to Kalkine TV. For more live updates on Kalkine TV across the economy, markets and sectors, I'm James Preston for Kalkine TV.